Let's talk to Emily Carver, because in the wake of the big story that's been dominating all the front pages this week, um, the questioning of a police officer uh, in the kidnap and murder of a young woman who disappeared from the streets of London um, and has uh, now been thought to have been killed. Um, in the wake of all of that, there's been a big debate and a big discussion around the streets of this country and how safe they are for women. And while I'm obviously a man, uh, there is no reason why you would expect me not to understand what this is like because we have sisters, we have mothers, we have daughters, uh, we have cousins, we have female friends, girlfriends, you know, wives, who we think, as men, should be free to walk around anywhere they can without fear of being sexually harassed, uh, sexually assaulted, uh, or indeed uh, whistled at. I don't go for those people who say, oh, it's only ni nice to compliment a woman. It's not. If it's not wanted, it's not needed, and therefore you shouldn't do it. It's as simple as that. Let's talk to Emily Carver about all of this. Emily, very good morning to you. Morning, Mike. How are you? Yeah, very well. Thanks very much for joining us. I've got a really interesting uh, tweet here from uh, somebody called Kim who says, I'd like to be able to park at my workplace. She's a nurse, right? So many nurses and young students having to walk in the dark to get to a bus or a parking place off site. Luckily, I have a husband to pick me up or meet me, but most of the students don't have family in the city. And she's up in the Midlands, right? An awful lot of women are, um, you know, upset about what's happened this week. Many of them uh, that I've spoken to here in the office have actually been quite badly affected by it because they either live quite near where this woman was abducted from, but they've all sort of found themselves telling stories of things that have happened to them, um, which have made them feel either frightened or uncomfortable. And there seems to be an awful lot more of this going on than we thought, really. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly just the reality of being a woman that when you walk the streets, be it at night or during the day, that you do run the risk of getting, you know, certain types of comments, um, certain harassment, you know, just going from a sort of wolf whistle to a cat call to a, you know, just a sort of unpleasant interaction. And that's certainly true. Um, but I think the reason why the story has been made so much of is precisely because the fact these types of crimes are so rare, thankfully, mm. these sort of stranger attacks. I mean, this woman was potentially murdered. So, I mean, this is a rare case. I'm not sure we should be making sweeping generalizations about female male relations based on this particular event. But I, you know, I do appreciate that we should be talking about um, harassment of women. It does happen. It does happen in cities. It happens across the country. And there are probably things that we should be doing to, um, to solve it. But it's, it's, it's quite crazy, the conversation that we've had recently. We had the Green Party uh, peer, Jenny Jones, saying saying that we should be introducing a uh, curfew from 6 p.m. And now we've heard from uh, Mark Drakeford, who's, of course, the first mm. the Welsh First Minister, saying um, he said it wouldn't be on the top of his list, but he would consider it and not rule out instituting such a measure. And, you know, I'm thinking that this may be one of the consequences of the past year of lockdown measures that politicians suddenly think that they can use these blunt tools these blunt instruments to solve society's ills and i think that that certainly is not the case at the end of the day this is fundamentally about attitudes yes. towards women and you can't solve that through a curfew well that's absolutely right peter has tweeted in to say most blokes are not sex pests so please stop tiring the rest of us for the actions of others nobody's tiring anybody peter but the fact is um that men are most likely to be sex pests rather than women but you're right i mean julie hartley brewer this week was saying this that you know she's not frightened of men she's frightened of bad people and she's frightened of uh, of walking into a place where there might be somebody who wants to commit a criminal act in the same way that i would be uh, perhaps a little bit unsure of walking through some neighbourhoods of London very, very late at night um, because bad things can happen there. But but I think overall, this idea that Drakeford and others have had, which is to kind of suggest that men are the problem, is idiotic. I mean, I'd like to put a curfew on Mark Drakeford, to be honest, and just say to him, just don't go out and don't talk to anybody because you're a complete idiot and it would be a lot safer for the rest of us if you just kept your mouth shut. But I mean, you know, this march that's, that's supposedly taking place at the weekend is also now the sort of subject of controversy. I think there's a court case currently going on because the police have told the marchers, if you start marching uh, to reclaim the streets, you will be in breach of COVID regulations and you could risk a fine. <laughs> I mean, I, I certainly think the vigil should go ahead if people want to do it. I don't think it's a risk in terms of COVID. And as you say, we've had 
so many different um, uh, protests going on and so on and so forth that have been allowed um, to go on uh, without any police interference, mm. really. So I think it's fair that this goes ahead. But I do agree that we shouldn't be making broad brush statements about men's behaviour. Men are individuals, first and foremost, and um, that's how we should treat them. I also think, you know, having a brother and, and, and obviously knowing lots of men in my life, uh, a lot of young men particularly and, and boys feel very frightened about walking the streets at night. They are uh, usually more uh, more harassed in terms of you know muggings and so on. Mm. So they're very much at risk in the same way as women are. Um, but I do think that we need to be you know looking at this in terms of social attitudes rather than trying to make legislation. A lot of women's groups are you know trying to clamp down on this through making creating new laws against uh, misogyny and so on and so forth. I don't think that's the way to go about this. This is about cultural attitudes mm. and it's about educating young men that women aren't just uh, there for their, you know, object, aren't there to be objectified and mm. to be treated in such a way. Um, I don't think you can legislate your way out of this kind of issue. No, and I think it's also for other men who are not like that to, to kind of police to some extent the way that other women are spoken to by other men, if you like. I mean, I remember a few years ago, I, I was on a, uh, an escalator on the underground and I was coming out of Waterloo Station or something. And this guy sort of came from behind me and there was a woman standing in front of me about two steps up and he just sort of grabbed her, right? Um, and which obviously she didn't want him to do. And I just, and I just, as he was grabbing her, I just grabbed him and sort of chucked him back down the escalator. Um, and he was quite shocked and she was very grateful. And I think if men can do that sort of thing, and I'm, I'm not suggesting that's always the safest way to go if there's a crowd of people, but you know, I think if other men who are not like that sort of make it very clear that they're not going to put up with it, I think there'll be a lot less of it. I think that's very true. I mean, it's a it's a collective issue, isn't it? If you see a woman who's clearly looks like she's being harassed or is uncomfortable, it should be for the rest of us to step in mm. and try and help. Because under any circumstances, unless we lived in a police state, there simply isn't going to be a, a policeman next to every woman uh, when she's going about her day to day life. So I think it is for other men and it is for other women to call out this behavior but of course you know we all need to be looking towards each other's behavior men and women because it's not all men who behave in such a fashion there are also very obnoxious women as well out and about oh i can vouch for that definitely no question at all. yeah but i mean you know it's going to be interesting once uh, people start mingling again because i think a lot of people have forgotten how to do it you've actually forgotten how to be sociable with each other <laughs> Um, yeah, there may be quite a few awkward encounters in pubs and bars to come. <laughs> People haven't been out on dates recently, I imagine, so perhaps their uh, social skills are, are lacking right. at the moment. We'll see if that has an impact, although I imagine the dating scene and the bars and clubs will be full of young people, you know, trying to meet someone after a year of not being they might able be full to... Of, they might be full of some old people trying to meet someone as well, don't forget, because they're all happy. They're all happy as Larry now, they've had the vaccine. Sorry, I'm being very ageist. Yes, they'll be out and about before we are, or before I am. Exactly right. Isn't it funny, though, that when you, uh, as soon as you, you look for a cop, you can't find one, but as soon as you start a march uh, on any given day, there's plenty of police and they're all over you like a rash. Well, I mean, this goes back to sort of police priorities. We saw, um, you know, when it was Black Lives Matter, Extinction Rebellion, they were very... Uh, uh, they weren't exactly authoritarian with their approach to uh, keeping things under control. So they very much seem to be picking and choosing depend on the, depending on the political cause that's involved in terms of protesting. But I think that um, this vigil this vigil that's going ahead, well, I think it should go ahead firstly. And I think that this is a major issue, but fundamentally it comes down to attitudes. And as you say, men should be um, talking to their peers and saying, you know what, stop wolf whistling that girl, don't harass her, right. behave like gentleman simple as that well i think you know imagine if it was your mother or imagine if it was your sister and somebody was doing that to you i mean i've got as you know a daughter who's who's um uh, living now in the middle east and it's a very different world out there where she tells me it's pretty awful sometimes when you're a woman out and about in a place like dubai um because out there uh, they treat women literally as if they are sort of chattels um and and particularly if you're not from there you don't have any rights particularly, and, and it's quite difficult. And, and thankfully, we are in a much better place than that. But uh, it's only when you talk to your girlfriend or your, your, your mother or your sister or your, you know, like you'd say, you talk to your brother and, and his friends and you get an idea of what it's like for people. Because a lot of, nowadays people go, oh, you can't possibly know what it's like to be a woman. Well, no, I can't. But I know plenty of women who I talk to. So actually, I do understand what it's like.
Well, yeah, and I think also it's not very PC to say, but there is very different cultural attitudes depending on on in different men and certainly from where different men uh, come from. I've certainly experienced um, more harassment from uh, and from different cultures, uh, depending on where they come from. And there's very different attitudes across the world. And that should go without saying, really. So it's about sort of have trying to equalize the way people, the way men view women, first and foremost. Mm -hmm. And that's got to come from the family structure and then from the education system as well. And then also having the police deal with these crimes in a in a in a, in a strong and and, um, mm. and also, we were talking about this yesterday with Helen Dale. You know, there is something to be said for the kind of liberal culture that we have encouraged, which allows sex offenders to come out of prison um, because they've become rehabilitated, which everybody with a brain knows isn't the case. And yet these are probably the people who are doing most of this horrible um, uh, crime. Well, yeah, we know that this this man who's been uh, arrested for this crime had um, uh, been, uh, uh, I don't know if he was charged, but he'd been, been a, a suspect suspected of yeah, the indecent exposure. Of the indecent exposure, that's right, yeah. So that just shows that we need to come down hard on these things to begin with, mm. rather than let people on the loose. It's the same with terrorism. How many times have terrorists that have attempted to blow up somewhere or or been successful in their aims mm. been known to the authorities before? Exactly. It happens to well pretty, well, pretty much all the time, I think, is the straight answer for that. Well, listen, Emily, really appreciate you talking to us. Thank you very much indeed. It's a difficult subject for some people, this. And I'm not, by any means and by any stretch of the imagination, tarring all men as sex pests or sex offenders or uh, sexual assaulters. They're certainly not. And in fact, I don't know anyone that behaves like that. And probably you don't either. But there are plenty of men out there who do behave like that. Um, and it's important to stop it and it's important to talk about it. And I'll take your calls on it as well. 